Well, Shem, I, I want to get out of the way and just let you share your story with everybody about how Operation Christmas Child has impacted your life and your family's life. So would you please just go ahead and share okay. from your heart? All right. Thank you so much for uh, this opportunity. Uh, it's a blessing for me to be here and uh, have this opportunity to share what the Lord has done to this little boy, uh, 10 years old, back uh, in Ivory Coast. So like I was saying, I grew up in a Christian family. Uh, my father was a pastor. He, he was uh, leading a church. And uh, my mother helping me with the, in the ministry. They had four kids. I was the third one. And uh, we were not, we were okay. We didn't have a lot of money, but we were okay. But this was a good thing for us to be together. Until one day, I saw many people, they were coming to our house. And they were crying. I didn't know what was going on. Then I asked my mother, mother, what is happening? Why all these people are crying? And uh, she told me, your father went to heaven. We're going to see him soon. I was six years old, and I didn't really understand what she was saying. For me, uh, my father went somewhere else, and he, came, he, he was supposed to come back later. But my mother really met that my father passed away. Right after my father passed away, we faced poverty because we didn't have money. Uh, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't have any money left. No bank accounts, no credit card. It's not like here uh, in USA at a certain age you are able to get a credit card, a bank, a bank account. It's not like that. So it was really tough. We couldn't stay in the church house because another pastor had to come to lead the church. The church tried to support us, but it wasn't enough for us to rent an apartment in town. Then we decided to go to my mother's village. When we arrived there, life was harder because we couldn't go to school like the other, the other kid. We have to walk to go to school. The school was really far. Kilometers, we had to walk every day to go to school. We have to grow our own food under a hot sun. We, we, we didn't have good water to drink. We used to drink water from the well or the river. It was really tough. And my mother didn't want us to have this kind of life. Then she asked one of our father's friends. He used to live in town. She asked him, uh, can we come to your house? a time for me to find something to do so uh, we can be able to rent our own apartment. And this friend said, yes, you guys can come over. Then we moved back in town. When we arrived there, my mother was thinking what she could do to have money. And God gave her an idea. This idea was to buy blue jeans and resell it at the market. And God blessed this idea because out of it, we were able to rent an apartment and apply for a public school for the children. You know, hope came back to, uh, to, uh, in our life. We were really happy because we finally had a place in town. But me, as I started to go back to school, I noticed that something was missing inside of me. I was around 9 and 10 years old, and as I was going to school, I could, uh, I could hear sometime my classmates talking about their father. I could hear, my, my father is a teacher, my father is a doctor, and uh, Shimea, how about you? Who's your father? And I couldn't share mine because I didn't really know my father. So I was looking for my father. I felt alone, and back home, uh, I had to study harder. Because in the public school, you have three times. If you fail three times, you're going to be kicked out of the school. So you have to study harder. You got to make sure to pass uh, all the classes. I mean, one or two, if you want to do two times, it's your t but if you, if you want to go over three times, you ain't going to work. They're going to kick you out of the school. And it was hard. I didn't have any good toy to play with. I used to play to make my own toy. So we, in Africa, we know how to do, to do that. We found uh, a palm tree, and we built that as a toy. We play with it. If I don't find any wood to make, to make uh, my toy, I use somebody's shoes or play with my friend's toy. My mother didn't have money to afford for good toy. She couldn't afford it. The money we had was only to rent the apartment and for food. But one thing my mother liked, she really loved God. She loved Jesus. And every night, she used to do Bible study with us. And one night, as we were doing Bible study, she was talking about a heavenly father. She said, even though we do not have 
a father in this house, we do have a heavenly father who loves us and cares for us. As I was looking for a father, I asked my mother, since you said this father is my father, can he give me a gift or a present? And she told me, yes, go and pray. He can hear you. And, you know, my mother didn't say, I see that my child wants a toy. Let me save up some money and buy him a good toy. But she said, go and pray because she wanted me to talk to God, to have a relation with God. There's no age to talk to God at any age. I was uh, around 9 and 10 years old, and she could have said, hey, he doesn't know what to say to God. Let me give him a toy. That's, what, that's all he wants. But she said, hey, go and pray. God can hear you. As a child, I, I listened to my mother, and I went to my bedroom, and I prayed a short prayer. I said, Father in heaven, if you are my father, give me a gift. Amen. After I prayed that prayer, one month, two months, I even forgot my prayer. Until one day, we went to a church. It was a Sunday. We were about to end service. And the pastor said, oh, before you leave, I have an announcement. Uh, don't let the children go home because we received some gift for them. I was surprised and happy at the same time because I never received a gift before. And on that day, I was about to. And after service, we went to one of the big rooms of the church. As I was entering the big room, I could see many boxes, green, red, really shiny. I was really expected on, one, uh, on that day, only one toy. But it was okay for me. But God had another plan for me. Amen. So... After the pastor prayed over the boxes, the shoe boxes, they start to call children's name until I heard my name and I ran to the front and they gave me, they gave me a full packed shoe box. And I didn't have to share with my siblings. They, they, they got their own boxes and I was so happy. I took my box, I ran to my mother and I said, mother, look at what I have. She was really happy because she couldn't afford some good toy and now a child had one. And she was happy. She told me, hey, open it. I want to see inside. And I opened my box. Many things was inside. The box was packed. Amen. I, uh, I, have so, I had some uh, school supplies, hygiene items. It was really full and packed. But one thing, one item caught my eyes. It was a yellow race car. Amen. A yellow race card. You know, when I was praying, I didn't say, Father in heaven, I want a yellow race card. Father, I want this, I want that. But God knew my heart. He knew what is good for me. You know, before we come into the presence, Lord, uh, into the presence of the Lord, God knows what we need. He created us so he knows what we like. And I like cars. Even today, I do like cars. So when I received that toy, it changed everything. I knew that I have a heavenly father, like my mother told me. Because how come God can touch someone's heart to pack a shoebox, put the right toy inside, and send all the way to Africa? Only God can do this. And I realized that God was with me. He never forsaken forsake me. And I wanted to play. Uh, God wanted, but God wanted me to meet him. Amen. So this box changed my life because of the shoebox you packed. He changed one life. All the way to Africa. And now I'm here sharing this testimony. Amen. A yellow race car. Yes. <laughs> so now, do you have a driver's license? Yes, I do. <laughs> do you have a yellow car? <laughs> I'm working on that. You're working on that. <laughs> well, that one, will be, you'll, with a yellow car, you'll be, people will see you coming from a long way away. Definitely, so. yeah. Where, where do you live now? Now I live in Virginia. Um, I, I work as a U.S. Navy member. So when I came to the USA, God worked out. I don't know if I have time to share that. Do you want me to share? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. So when I came to the USA, I was working at McDonald's and Pixar Hat, and it was really tough. And one friend came to me. He said, hey, why don't you join the military? And I said, I cannot do that. Uh, I don't speak English. My first language is French. So but he said, he left. But this question was stuck in my mind all the time. Why don't you join the military? And I said, okay, God, I'm going to try so I found a recruiter. When she gave me a test, she said, you have to score 30 points. But after the test, I only scored 11 points. And she said, you're not ready. Just go and study English and come back. So I was discouraged. But God put the same question in my heart. Why don't you join the military? And I said, God, I couldn't go to school because I was really tired. I couldn't, like, follow up. So God told me, teach yourself English. And I was watching TV, movies, 
and cartoons, taking my notes, repeating everything on the TV. And after only two months, I called the recruiter back. I said, hey, I want to do the test again. And she told me, you sure? Because if you felt that you have to wait five years before doing it again. So I said, yes, I'm ready. And I, I was doing the test. I, was, I prayed God lead me through this test. And as I was reading the question, I could feel in my heart the right answer. I was clicking, clicking, and at the end, they gave me an envelope. I sent the picture to, a picture to my uh, recruiter, and she was like, no way. I said, what, what is going on? She told me, you passed, and you scored 51 points. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that was amazing because she knew that I couldn't do even a 30 point, and now I scored 51 and this is how I joined the military. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm serving uh, on the John F. Kennedy carrier. We are building a new one. The, the old one was decommissioned, so now we are building a new one. And it's one of the finest uh, carrier in the world right now. So I'm really blessed to serve this country. You can see how these bags uh, uh, did, uh, what these bags did in my life. I didn't, when I look back, I see that God gave me this bags to bring me to him and send me here to share what it did for me, and now I'm serving this country. I'm, I'm helping the people who actually packed shoebox for me. Amen. And when I see that, I'm so grateful, and I see how God works, how God worked into my life. Amen. Well, thank you for serving our country in Praise that, the Lord. that way, too. So mm -hmm. how many years have you been in the Navy now? Four years now. Four years. Yeah. Is this going to be like a career, probably? Yes, I, I, I don't know yet, but I'm still uh, I'm about to sure. re-enlist again. Uh, as long as God tells me to stay in, I'm going to serve. Well, God yes. bless you for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is so neat. So you went from uh, uh, a yellow race car to a naval carrier now? Yes. One of those big big boats out there. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> How old are you right now? Actually? I'm 28 years old. 28 years yes. old. And you received your box when you were 10, 10 years old. Yes. So it's been, uh, and do, doing my math, that's 18, 18 years. years. Yeah. 18 years. No, now, when you received your box at 10 years of age, when what brought you to the, um, the United States of America? When did you come to, to America? Uh, it was um, a friend. So after I got my box, um, I was praying that God could give me something to do. My mother was getting old. She couldn't work. So I said, God, give me something to do. And a friend came to me. He said, I applied for green card. Let me apply green card for you. And I said, I, can, I cannot do that. I'm Christian. This is a lottery. I don't do this. But uh, you know, sometimes God has some ways to work that we don't understand. Right. We have a mindset in our mind saying that, hey, I know how God will move. That's not God. But sometimes God moves and uh, we don't really be even recognize that is God. Amen. So every time this friend sees me, he's like, let me apply green card for you. And I always refused. Until one night, we, I was working with my wife. She was my fiance at that time. And this friend came again. He said, let me apply green card for you. And I said, okay. I told my wife, I said, hey, look at this friend. I don't know what is wrong with him. All the time he sees me, he said, let me apply green card. And my wife told me, oh, but let him apply. He will leave you alone. And I said, okay. I'm glad that she was there and she gave me good advice. And then I have him apply for me. And after two years, my name was on the list. And he called me and said, hey, you got picked up to receive the green card. You, you might say, hey, you receive the green card because you apply for it. But in Africa, many people, thousands of people apply for green card and only a few are picked up. I think 100 or 200, it depends. So it's really a miracle to have my name on the list. Even my friend, he used to apply for the green card, but he never got picked up. By me, for the first time, my name is on the list. Amen. So I came here in 20, uh, the 2018, November 28th, 2020. 2018. Yes. That's a, so, uh, may I ask, is, is your mom still alive? Yes. Where does she live? She lives in, uh, in the capital, back home, in uh, Abidjan. Okay. And okay. Uh, I'm able now to rent a nice apartment for her. She was, I told her not to work anymore. She's been working when we were children. So now I want her to rest and go to church and yep. enjoy life. Good for her. Yes. That's a good, that's a good <laughs> son. <laughs> that's a good son. Uh, I, again, this is a tremendous story. Uh, as God has a path for you, mm -hmm. uh, again, it started, your, you know, the, the lineage of your dad. Yes. Uh, a, a pastor. So you're, you're a pastor's kid. I'm a pastor's kid. Yeah, man. That's a, that's a special privilege. I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm so thankful that uh, I had parents who uh, mm -hmm. uh, had a Christian faith and yes. raised me in that. And so you were able to see that. But then when you were, uh, as, a, uh, as a, 
uh, a son, a boy that didn't have a father, God revealed himself yes. to you that he's your heavenly father. Yes. And just like your name, you're his child. Just child. Famous just, child of God, right? Is yes. that what you said? Children of God. Children of God. <laughs> yes. So, uh, well, again, I encourage you just continue to, to share that story. It's a blessing.